Hey, I'm Mewed, and you're watching me play Rocket Knight Adventures on the Sega Genesis. Uh, some of you more observant viewers out there might notice the score is incongruent with what it was when we left off, and that's because of technical difficulties. You're going to need to get... Uh, there's going to be a lot of that. Just a lot. Uh, I am a amateur, and frankly, you probably be better off watching a proper speedrunner, a proper long play of this game. That would be a good tour of this. You don't necessarily have to have me uh, here. What I'm offering you here that's special is my glowing affection for this game. And while we're while I'm confessing to uh, things here, the other thing is I need to admit to you that we're playing this on easy mode. Now, in my defense, I'm really bad at video games, but also it's... Uh, the default difficulty setting of this game. There also is an easier difficulty setting, which is called Children, but if we play the game on that, we don't get to see the ending. Now, a big thing with this game is that uh, it's one of those games where if you play it on a higher difficulty setting, all that really happens is that you get fewer extra lives and enemies do a lot more damage. I tried to get good at this game on being on hard mode uh, way back, but it's not really that fun. This is a game where it's a lot, it's enjoyable just to be able to play a little recklessly. Especially with this rocketing mechanic where you, this, given the screen size, uh, you just rocket around, you propel yourself into danger pretty frequently, very quickly. It, it's just way better when you have some level of forgiveness with that. Um, on hard mode, most enemies can one or two shot you. And you know, I wouldn't mind getting so good at Rocket Knight Adventures that I could pull that off. Just, you know, like, uh, one CC this whole experience. Like, that can be my claim to fame. Put that on my tombstone. But, you know, frankly, it's not uh, something that I really have time for anymore. Like, the fact that I've, I am as presentable at this game as you are seeing me is just kind of indicative of, like, the fact that I was so fond of this game way back. Oh, he's using he's using the little uh, hoops now. I'm in trouble. But like I was saying in the prior episode, just uh, there's a lot of games out there where you back then you had to get through it and they, they had the difficulty cranked up so that you know if you rented this game you couldn't just play through it in one sitting you know rent it you'd have to actually go out and buy the game to reasonably see everything or you know just rent it uh enough times in a row depending on if your household situation was more inclined to you know go to blockbuster weekly or something like that you know, those days are long gone. I, I guess you could go to a red box and kind of have do a similar thing. It'd be much easier now that you wouldn't have to have, like, the same game necessarily if you're doing something like an RPG that would require saves. You can just have your own save data on your console. One little piece of trivia is that this little walker thing we have here is kind of interesting in that the later Rocket Knight Adventures games would kind of introduce a Mechano ostrich thing that would be like Sparkster's uh, faithful steed. I don't think this thing is really a direct inspiration for that, but I like to think it is. I like to, you know, have my, you know, fan uh, theories here for the Rocket Knight adventures. I was, as a kid, frankly disappointed with the absolute dearth of Rocket Knight Adventures fan fiction. There wasn't much of a community way back. And even less so now. I did, at one point, write my own fanfic for this just to kind of fill the void. It wasn't good, but it exists. Bosses like this are a bit different than a lot of the ones that are uh, found elsewhere in the game. With this one, I have to wait for the opportunity to damage it. And it's, I need to hit this red guy. Oh, 
and Sparkster is not impressed with this. The nice thing about that boss is that it will reliably spit up bananas for you. So if uh, you know how to position yourself there, you can just uh, eat bananas the whole time and take forever to kill the boss if you want. I needed to let that entire scene play out so that you could really just soak in the story. Um, I do think that that little Triceratops sprite that the king had uh, is probably the ugliest sprite in the whole game. That's not the princess at all. We've been tricked. So we've gotten aboard this steel-plated dirigible. Um, we need to try and get up there and deal with Axel, because even though this isn't the princess, the princess is on the ship, and we need to get her back, because princesses are really the single driving narrative factor in video games. I've been playing a lot of Kingdom Hearts lately, and that game, at least the first one, had seven princesses um, that were significant to the plot. And I'm not like I'm sure that there are some games out there that top that in terms of like sheer volume of princesses, but like that's that's still relatively high for the average for like video games. Usually one, maybe two, is what you're going to be dealing with at a time. And there they are. Game's indicating it wants me here. I generally die a lot in this section because there is a uh, insta-debt pith directly below here. We'll see if I screw up. The game tends to be generous though. Like if you, there's one-ups like that one that can make sure that if you are terrible at video games, as I am, uh, you will be able to uh, get a lot of practice in. I have to resist the temptation to try and rocket into this boss, because even though you can ricochet back up to this wire here, he will consistently uh, get his little flame jets on you every single time. After multiple failed attempts to record myself playing this game, I need, I've need i learned that I need to be more cautious. I need to restrain myself. I'm very excited to share this game with you, but that doesn't mean that I can just, you know, I, just go in guns blazing. Rockets blazing. This game uh, has a lot of visual gags like that one up there with the pig, the sailor pigs on rotary bikes powering the entire ship. It's world building. Not really, but I don't know. They, they milk this gag in particular a lot, as you can see. They, I, the sprite artists definitely wanted this showcased as much as possible. Now, there's anything wrong with that. I, I think that usually most, like the amount of creative work that goes into every single video game, every single piece of art is like astronomical. And usually we don't like, you know, sit there and appreciate like, every single detail the way that maybe we should. You know, I'm just speaking as somebody who just likes stuff, likes making stuff, and how, like, when you, even when you're a kid and you're inspired to try and make stuff, like, this game inspired me to want to write stuff to some degree. Uh, maybe want to, like, make games, make my own stuff, because, uh, you know, just that insatiable need to make goofy animal stories that are taken maybe a little too secretly, seriously under the, uh, sorry, I'm just focusing my key there. I don't, I don't want to be bad at video games in front of you. I don't want to embarrass myself on the internet, as I tend to. It's another boss where I have to wait for it. Wait for the chance to strike. 
This boss uh, follows a very consistent pattern. You're rewarded by it to, for being able to memorize and execute where that debris is going to fall. But I still died to it anyway. What was I saying? Ah, uh, yes, uh, that, there's hard work involved in making things. I didn't like coming to that realization that if I wanted to make things, I'd have to put a lot of hard work in because I'm generally lazy and like to procrastinate, as most people do. And the only way to deal with that in terms of like actually producing anything of note is just discipline. I used to think that, you know, you need to just approach everything from a inspiration standpoint, that you need to sit down and be inspired and that have that let drive you uh, to make the thing you want to make. And I found that that's generally not a very useful uh, attitude to have when making stuff. Because if you wait for inspiration, your thing's never going to get made. This part of the boss is actually very dangerous. You think that he's just a joke because he's running back and forth, but he can shave off significant amounts of your health if you're not careful. Luckily, when you strike uh, enemies in this game, uh, you they can't hurt you. So if you time things well, you can kind of just uh, kind of phase through them. There we go. Starting forth. Okay, uh, that should be it for this one. Uh, again, if you like this nonsense, you know, do the usual routine. Give me all those stats, those you know, those likes, those comments, those those bells, whatever. Um, otherwise, I'm gonna keep doing this until you tell me to stop. Bye.